Alright, so it's a lovely Friday out, and I thought I should make a video, and I was going to get some forging done, so I thought I would make a blacksmithing for beginners video. Um, so in this video, I think I'm going to cover um, the basics to get started, uh, I'm going to make a pair of tongs and show you how to do that, and I'm going to show some experience that I learned around along the way, and this is by no means a, a complete guide or anything like that, this is some, some tips and tricks that I learned, and no one taught me, I pretty much figured it out by myself. Um, so I guess take it with a grain of salt is, is the theme there. So let's get to it. So I'm going to start out here with some talking points. Um, I think I'm going to teach in the way that I don't, don't ask me where, where I found this because I don't remember. It was on the internet somewhere. Uh, the three H's of blacksmithing. So the first H I'm not going in any particular order also. Um, the first H that I'm going to talk about is hit. So you need something to hold it, something to hit it with, and something to heat it with, your 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 work piece. So hit it with, something to hit it with, which means a hammer basically. Um, like a, a cross peen hammer like this is really handy. This is what I use um, for most of my work. This is actually a pretty light one, but I'm too cheap to go out and buy one. This is just one I had kicking around somewhere. Um, and it's got uh, this, this cross pin here that you can use for drawing out or making shoulders or something like that. And it's heavy enough that you can actually do some serious work. Um, the next hammer that I most use is uh, just a ball peen hammer. Um, a lot of times uh, you need the, the actual ball for something. So maybe you're, you're doing a pair of tongs um, and you're going you're gonna to put an indent in the jaws or anything like that. You're making an indent for some reason. And then also it's... it's Weight-wise is often a lot better balanced for blacksmithing. Um, the next one is just a, a carpenter's claw hammer. I personally wouldn't use that. The thing is, is that they're not really heavy enough, um, and they're not, you're not they're not made for blacksmithing. Like you can see on here, it's got a nice rounded face to it with chamfered edges there on that hammer head. And then uh, a claw hammer is not so much. It's made for driving nails, not for um, smacking a piece of red hot metal. So that's just kind of the basics. Um, personally, I started out on a claw hammer because that's all I had. Um, but I would invest a little bit of money and get an actual black blacksmithing hammer. So the next H of blacksmithing is something to hold your work with. Um, this is a pair of tongs I made out of rebar. I, I don't know, it's probably 3 8 rebar. Not quite a half inch. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a pair like this. Um, rebar works great for, for um, tongs. The only thing is you, you should probably use thicker than that. This is half inch. That's what we're going to make it out of, half inch rebar today. Um, I wouldn't go any smaller than that because what ends up happening is you get a lot of spring in the handles, which isn't a good thing when you're trying to hold um, you know, a piece of metal that's 1,400 degree, degrees. Um, so tongs are actually really important. Um, what you're holding your piece with is how hard you can hit it. Because if you don't have a good grip on it, you will have it slip out of the tongs and land on you and burn you and all sorts of bad things, start fires and things like that. Um, so another option uh, that I don't actually have sitting around here um, is vice grips. Vice grips work really well. The only thing is, is that they get your hand really close to the metal. And if you're doing something like forge welding where it requires really high temperatures, it gets hot. Um, also, pliers and stuff like that, I really wouldn't recommend just a pair of straight pliers um, unless you're doing something really small. But tongs are easy enough to make that it's really kind of your best bet. All right, the last H is something to heat your piece with. Um, so when I first started shaping metal, I'm not even going to call it blacksmithing at that point, I built a little soup can forge. I took a soup can and I bowed the end out, and then I, I mixed up like um, plaster of Paris and sand to make a kind of concrete that I could line it with, and then had a, a pipe nipple that went in here that I can stick a blowtorch in. And I mean, honestly, it doesn't work very well. If you're going to like flatten a piece of metal, like I, I think all I could make in there was arrowheads. Um, it's really not long enough to do a knife. Um, you can't really heat treat it because it doesn't get hot enough. You can't heat treat anything. Um, and really, it doesn't work very well. The, the plaster crumbles and, and all that. Honestly, if I was going to recommend to someone to do something, I would say just don't, don't do the soup can forge. It doesn't really work. Um, now, I forge with charcoal. I have a charcoal forge. Um, I got a buddy that I helped um, 
build a uh, propane forge with. Uh, we help. We built a uh, forced air manifold um, propane forge. And that works really well. Um, kind of pluses and minuses to those. Um, propane is a lot, um, lot easier to use. It's a lot uh, more even burning. It's consistent in its burn. Um, personally, I like charcoal for several reasons. Firstly, because um, the ch forges are so cheap to make. Like I, I spent probably um, ten dollars on both of my forges. It, it was really cheap. The most expensive thing is a um, is pipe, um, and I'm sure you can get that cheaper than I did. Um, also, uh, charcoal forges are much more controllable. If you only want to work on a little piece of metal, you can make a small fire, and it, you're not burning very much charcoal. Um, and you can really concentrate the heat where you want it, as opposed to a propane forge where it's pretty much all or nothing. Um, lastly, I, I haven't actually calculated out the numbers, but I'm pretty sure that, that I get a lot more bang for my buck running charcoal than he does propane. Um, it's a lot more efficient. Like I said, I can control the fire size. So um, what, how big I want the fire to be, that's how much charcoal I burn. Um, and I spend... I, I use briquettes because they're so cheap. I have used um, natural charcoal and it's a lot better for this kind of work. Um, but briquettes, I can buy like a 20 pound bag for like $6, which is so much cheaper. And especially when you think, you know, it's what, like 30 bucks for, for a can of propane, a big tank of propane. And uh, he goes through those pretty quick, like once every couple weeks, um, where 30 bucks will buy a lot of charcoal. Coal also works really well. I haven't really done much with it. Um, it's kind of difficult to get in the area I live in, uh, in the Midwest, so um, haven't experimented around with that much. Uh, but basically, um, the the pluses for me for charcoal is that it's a cheap forge to build. Um, I can run it cheaply, and I can control the size of the fire really well. I should have probably mentioned it um, under the hitting section, but an anvil is also necessary. This is like a, uh, I think it's a vice anvil actually, um, but it does very well for what I need. So another thing to consider with um, charcoal forges is the ash that it creates, which is, you know, sometimes bad if you live in the city and you can't do anything with it, but for me it's not a big problem. All I do is move my bricks out of the way, and, oh, hold on a second, here we go, take a shovel, and scrape them out, so I'll go over these, these forges too, um, this is my sword forge, it's just two cinder blocks, and then you can't see it here, but there are bricks lining the bottom of this, and then a single air hole at the bottom, that's just pipe that comes out on the other side, so I can hook a hair dryer up to it. So once I've got the ash scraped out, um, I'll take my lovely pink hair dryer and hook it up um, to the pipe there uh, and blow all the ash that fell down into the tube into the, the airflow and blow all that out before I start forging so it's not in there to restrict the airflow. Next, I'll need to light a fire above that air vent. Um, started with wood, and then I'll put my charcoal on top of that to get the charcoal going once the wood is caught, and then that'll start my forge.
All right, so the Ford's just starting to get going there. Um, don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, it's starting to get going. I got the two pieces for our tongs right here. Uh, and then I have my sword in there too. I'm going to work on that way. I have the charcoal going. So the first step in making these tongs is going to be flattening out the actual part that grips the piece of metal. So right there, right here, and right here on the, the two pieces of metal is just going to get flattened out first, drawn out. And um, that's going to form the jaws of the plot, the jaws of the tongs. And the big thing here is that you want to make both pieces, both uh, arm, both half of the tong exactly the same so that they go together well at the end. All right, so I got both of the uh, flat parts here formed out. So the next step of this process is going to be thinning down these curves right here and actually putting that curve in. So that way, um, when you need to grip larger stuff, you can uh, have all this extra room to fit uh, whatever you're working in there. And also it allows you to have a grip on different shapes and sizes of, of pieces. So here's a trick. Whenever you're working a piece of metal that you directly grab um, instead of using tongs, it's handy to keep a can of water that you can drizzle over there so that way you're not burning your hands. It keeps the metal cool enough for you to grab. Next what we're going to do is form these flat parts right here. This is where the uh, bolt will go through um, and it's essentially the place where the, um, the tongs hinge at. Uh, so all we're going to do is flatten, flatten the bar out this way.
So here we are right now. Um, I'm ready to drill the holes in these and then we'll fine tune them afterwards. Um, I'm not going to quench these because that will make the metal hard and hard to drill through them. So uh, I'm just going to leave them to cool and work on other stuff while they're cooling. So here's an important piece of safety gear that most people don't think about, having a water bottle. Dehydration is very dangerous, probably not as dangerous as burning yourself on a red hot piece of metal, but it still can kill you, and it's an important thing to think about, especially in the summertime. Alright, so now we're going to take these um, two halves of our tongue and drill holes right through that wide spot. Okay, so there we have the holes drilled. Um, so these line up now, like, yeah, whatever, you'll see. Um, now we're going to cut a piece of quarter inch round stock to use as a pin there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to line these up. Like, see this, I believe. I think that looks right. Yeah, that's right. We'll take this pin. See if we can get it driven through. There we go. And now we will stick it in this one. There we go. So now our tongs are stuck together. And so here we'll take it back down to the anvil and the ball peen hammer will come in handy. We'll peen this pin out. Okay, so we're going to have to heat this up red hot and then work it back and forth to get those good, um, to get it moving uh, smoothly. And then we're going to have to even up these ends here and then we'll be pretty much done. It's ugly now, but it'll be prettier later, I promise. Share another tip with you. When you're doing uh, work on your tongues, these are almost done. Um, I've been tuning them up. Uh, one thing that you can do to make them grab better is put a little indentation on the inside. So take the, the peen side of your hammer and a couple well-placed blows. So like you can see there, now here let me put it in the sun. You can see there, it's got a divot there. And that just allows it to have more surface area grabbing the edge instead of just one point. It's got all that circle around the divot. These are pretty much done. I'm going to go in and trim off the tip of that left left um, half so that it's even and maybe a little bit more tuning but they're pretty much done and these will work very well for bladesmithing or anything like that and the, if you're building any other kind of tong if you're building any other kind of tongs um, you can just mess around with this bit right up here and they all go together the same but uh, you can use different applications so there you go Not going anywhere. <laughs> 